did you read to your children or now? Do you read to your grandchildren? Absolutely. What do you read? Every night. Really? Uh, I have to tell you a story. Yeah. My granddaughter, that's my daughter's daughter, Naviana Bailey, when she was little, I used to make up stories every night. Mm. And in Hindi, when you tell children some stories, you always say, Ek Tharaja or Ek Tira. Mm. Aise, aise, you know, because I heard my father-in-law also mm. saying this. And every day, I said, they'd get lost in a boat. Mm. The prince and the princess, the king would be worried, the queen would be crying. And I used to, every day, add a little bit. Uh, fortunately, they didn't live with us. They'd go back to Delhi, so I got some rest. The second child arrived. <laughs> now I had to tell a story to both of them. Yeah. And I started telling the same story, yeah. uh, adding a little bit, yeah. and paying a little more attention to the prince as well. Yeah. It used to be more the princess before. <laughs> One night, and it used to be all in dark, and they were in these bunker beds. So the older one slept down, and the younger one slept down. Mm. She just bent down a little, Nani. Can we have a new story? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, poor child, she was patient for so long listening to my story, and she exactly knew. But when they're little, they love to hear the same thing. Mm. But I realized she'd grown up, mm. so it was time to stop making stories and read their proper published books. And then I started. Oh, wonderful. What a great gift that you were able to give. Uh, Jimmy, also, you told me one thing ages ago that, you know, the Bachchans are the most reluctant to part with the book. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. I mean, he's worse than me. <laughs> you know, you, um, you go out to a bookstore, um, most of the time, um, well, these days, one doesn't have the opportunity to go to a bookstore in town. So, it's mostly the airports when you're catching a flight. You have a bookstore and you rummage through all the bestsellers and you see the books. And you spend a lot of time before your flight in selecting a book. Then while you're in the plane, you, you start to read it. Uh, you make your little note on top of the first page. You write your name. You write the date you bought the book. Uh, you, you write the shop that you got it from, the, the flight you're on, how long it's going to take for you to reach your destination. All these details are there on every front page of the book. I'm not going to part with that book to see. <laughs> Kids would bring a box of Cadbury's chocolate or a box of uh, uh, cookies mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, when we were very little, that was fine. When we grew a little older, my father would always say, give a book. Mm -hmm. It remains on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Maybe not then, but sometime you pull it out and read it. That's more important than eating the biscuits and the chocolates. So this is something uh, that I was used to. And it was my job in the house to every Sunday clean the bookshelves. Mm. And uh, you know, and I would sort of go through them. And it's such an interesting uh, activity. And so when you've taken care, when you've been <coughs> told and you've been brought up with books more than anything else, even more than a piece of jewelry. It's a little difficult to part with gifts, uh, books. So, uh, but uh, sometimes I feel, okay, you've read it, I want to, I collect books and I send it to schools, especially for, the, for their library. And then 
I get to hear from the office, वो साहब ने पूरा वापस मंगवा लिया। Futile exercise. I mean, there is no place in the shelves for the books, and now they are on the floor. You know, I so. Can we stop this domestic conversation? <laughs> expressing myself, but it's a, it's a bit of a fine thought of climbing more consciously present in the world. You were committed to writing your blog and write it's great dedication and integrity every day. You know, there's no team serving that blog, it's you. Could you tell me what you have learned from the years of writing? Uh, it started off as a joke. Um, um, somebody said that, you know, you need to have a website in your name because there are about 150 websites under your name and none of them is the original. And I asked them how long it would take. They said it would take about six, seven months, you know, we collect all the material and we need to spend time with you. I said, that's too long. Can I do something tomorrow? And they said, yeah, you can write a blog. I said, what is that? And they explained it to me. And they put me onto a site and I wrote, hello, how are you? And closed the blog. And, uh, Next day, there was two comments that came to me, and I said, wow, this is terrible. So I, I took those two comments and I said, thank you so much for writing to me. Uh, who are you and how are you? There was four lines. And I got ten more replies, and uh, this just carried on. Now I have uh, about 500 dedicated uh, people on the blog who I have now named my EF, which is my extended family. Mm. I'm on uh, 3,896 days every day. <laughs> I've been writing the blog and uh, it's just, uh, I feel very committed now because I know that there are at least 500 people who are waiting for this blog to come. And uh, sometimes when I've forgotten to push the right button, uh, the post button on the computer, from 5 o'clock in the morning, I start getting these uh, alarms. What happened to you, sir? Where's the block? <laughs> you, you haven't pressed the, the right button. Yeah, do it right now. So it's, it's almost like a commitment. And, uh, but it's, it's really wonderful. Um, no matter what time I finish at night, um, most of the time it's very late, um, I do find time to write something. It's a moment, as you described uh, earlier on in your speech, of wanting to spend time with yourself, uh, to have your own solitude, and maybe just have an opportunity to talk to yourself. And if you can express that in words, uh, and if there are a few people that want to read it, it's just wonderful. It's not for any kind of personal gain or uh, any kind of uh, commercial gain. It's just something that, that comes out I never know what I'm going to write until you actually open that blog post and then suddenly everything starts coming. Uh, it could be anything, just you know, uh, a review of the day's work, uh, uh, some issue that has troubled you, something that my father wrote, something that I wanted to express on that. You know, since I have a book out, um, and I've always turned to the two of you for advice. Uh, can you speak a little louder? Sure. Would you like to scream, Jaji? <laughs> I'm happy to do so. Um, 